Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm Morgan. I'm doing my smart growth audit on Park Rapids, Minnesota. Park Rapids was founded in 1890. It's the county seat of Hubbard County, located 200 miles uh, northwest of the Twin Cities and 135 miles west of Duluth. The city has a total land area of 6.59 square miles and a population of just over 3,700 as of the 2010 census, uh, which comes out to be about an estimated density of 562 residents per square mile. Uh, the population, annual population growth is about 1.2%. Median income is just over 30,000. There are 1,352 jobs. Median age is 43. 22% of the population is over 18, is under 18. 25% of the population is 65 and over. Uh, to put these numbers in context, 14% of all Minnesotans are under 18 and 8% are over 65. Uh, so Park Rapids is heavily weighted on either end of the age spectrum. Uh, population growth has outpaced jobs over the last decade. There's actually been a 0% job growth. Um, while some of this is due to the recession, a lot of it has to do with the demographic uh, features I just mentioned. Cheap housing attracts young families, and uh, the availability of senior housing and assisted living facilities attracts elderly residents from surrounding rural areas. Uh, the manufacturing sector employs the biggest share of workers at 21%. Healthcare, education, and social services is the next biggest sector at 19%. However, these two sectors are trending away from each other. Uh, while manufacturing has enjoyed a 5% bump since 2000, the social service sector has declined by 5 percentage points over the same period. Uh, these are the top five employers, as you can see. Two retail, two social services, and one um, manufacturing, light industrial. Uh, so this is what the zoning map looks like for the city. Um, as you can see, they're relatively segregated. The red cutting through the city is the business district, and blue is open space, purple is light industrial, and the yellows are <clears throat> residential areas, and most of that is single, uh, single occupant or single family. There is some mixed use, these brown areas in the center, but uh, not much. Uh, the city does experience some problems with uh, hauling coming right through the, uh, from the business district to reach um, the uh, light industrial. So that creates some, uh, some congestion. 12% uh, of the city is vacant land, so there's still ample, ample opportunity to build out within the growth boundary. <coughs> Uh, the strengths, consistency of the regulatory regime, the goals and values delineated in the comprehensive plan are reflected in the zoning and other regulation documents. Strict adher adherence to the urban growth boundary development is well targeted to designated growth areas and is typically contiguous to existing development. Land outside the growth boundary is designated as agricultural and open space. Uh, there's a strong sense of place in the community. Um, they hold an annual community development workshop. And last year's workshop attracted over 800 people. So that's like one-fifth of the city. Uh, so it's a pretty big turnout. People are pretty involved. <coughs> uh, there's a strong commitment to preservation of natural resources and provision of public open space. Uh, the city has strong regulations in place protecting surrounding lakes and wetlands. It does an excellent job of maintaining parks and trails. Uh, it imposes a 5% set aside for open space and new developments or a comparable impact fee. Weaknesses, um, as mentioned, there's very little mixed 
use development. Uh, the city is only just beginning to encourage uh, this type, type of residential business development that was shown in brown on the zoning map. Um, there are weak energy and environmental regulations with the exception of um, those governing water and land use. There's very little attention paid to environmental issues in the regulatory regime, for example. In spite of all the industrial activity in the small airport, there are no regulations governing air quality or energy efficiency. Uh, the street system and parking infrastructure is inefficient. The streets are designed as a hierarchical arterial collector system. There's considerable problems with congestion due to hauling, as mentioned. Uh, these problems will only grow along with the city. <coughs> Street parking is largely prohibited in the business district and zoning regulations set minimum but not maximum parking spaces. Um, density is not even mentioned in any of the regulation. Um, there are other than setting maximum densities, there are no minimum densities. And they're struggling with economic development and um, social equity policies require attention. Job growth is lagged behind the increase in population. Vital public facilities and infrastructure like tele telecom networks that bolster economic development are undervalued. Uh, housing is generally affordable, but this is more a result of uh, all the um, vacant space and, and market forces rather than intentional policy. Um, as the city continues to grow, housing issues will likely begin to emerge, particularly in light of the city's low vacancy rates and meager multi-family housing stock. <coughs> Recommendations, uh, zoning regulations should be amended to allow for more mixed-use development and multi-family development. Uh, energy conservation and sustainability should be prioritized in the comprehensive plan. The city can take the lead in this by retrofitting public structures and spaces to adhere to these practices and incentivize their use. In well, okay, time is up. All right. <laughs> Questions? Can you tell us more about your recommendation? <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Um, new development should adhere to more efficient street layout. Parking regulations should be revised to include on street parking parking spaces, and they need to figure something out with uh, the hauling through the business district, although I don't really know what that would be. I guess we'll reroute, reroute the truck routes. Um, city should draft policies ensuring housing affordability at all income levels, and zone for more multifamily residential development, and set minimum densities. And uh, they didn't score particularly well on the, on the audit. Um, so you mentioned their social equity policies as a weakness. Can you elaborate more on those? Sure. They don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have any residential zoning outside of that single family? You're saying that they need to add for multi-family. I can't remember. They, they saw any there is a, there is a little bit of so the darker yellows. Um, the R three is is multi is multi-family. Okay. Um, so there is some, um, but like I said, vacancy rate is like even lower than in the Twin Cities. Even the lower thing. Yeah, so that could potentially be a problem as they as they grow. They are annexing a lot of the surrounding townships, so the population is growing and um, they have, it's like 2% vacancy rate or something. 